So what is hybrid ministry? A lot of times we think of uh, hybrid ministry as bringing together the online with the offline. And I think that's one way to imagine what hybrid ministry is all about. The problem with that definition, though, is it maybe sets us up for too much work in the church. Because when we think about hybrid ministry as adding church online to church that's already happening offline, what we've really done is we've, we've doubled our to-do list. We've given ourselves more on our plates, more on our checklists, and suddenly church staff and church leaders who are already a little bit tired and stretched too thin have even more to do. So I like to think of hybrid ministry a little bit different. I like to imagine hybrid ministry as practices of doing and being church that do two things, that extend a broad invitation to the life of the church and also equip individuals for lives of faithful service. Talk about both of those things a little bit. When we think about equipping individuals for lives of faithful service, we're talking about discipleship. And when we look at what the in-person or the analog church was really distinctively good at, it was doing just that. If you look at time studies from the United States Census Bureau, we see that the average churchgoer spent just 8.3 minutes per day on religious or faith-based activities. Yet from those 8.3 minutes, the average churchgoer is significantly more likely to volunteer in their community, to get involved with the school, to serve on an elected local government board, or to work with some kind of charity or nonprofit. I'm a big fan of the work of Robert Putnam, a sociologist whose book American Grace details that the importance of church membership is so critical to really the whole nonprofit and service industry in, in this country. I find it interesting that from just 8.3 minutes per day, churches catalyzed all of the sense of volunteerism, of service, of togetherness. And we really have to retain that. We don't want to let go or relinquish the ability to form people for living lives of service to the neighbor in response to the call of the gospel. And that's why when we talk about hybrid ministry, there's always going to be a neighborhood-based local component. Yet we also know that there's some limitations there. We know that uh, the church was losing members and perhaps losing the ability to create inroads with a culture that was rapidly moving online. And so that's why when we talk about hybrid ministry, we don't just want to talk about technology, but we want to talk about the ability to reach out and to be invitational, to extend a hand into spaces where re real people and real communities are gathered. Uh, Jim Keat, who's someone I follow, he's the Riverside Church New York digital minister, has frequently said during this time of pandemic and social distancing that virtual is never the opposite of real, but instead virtual is the opposite of, of physical. And to me, that's what hybrid ministry is also about, being invitational in real spaces where real people are gathered. The Great Commission tells us to go make disciples of all nations, and I think of the internet and the web and digital spaces and digital ecosystems in some ways as their very own nations, as their very own cultures. And indeed, when we look at the way the digital ecosystem and, and, and the digital world acts on our, our lives, we can see that it influences the way we think, the way we know, and the way we believe. We can think of hybrid ministry as bringing together offline and online, and indeed we can. But to do hybrid ministry effectively, we have to ask, how can we equip individuals for service in neighborhood and analog-based settings, just as we extend a broad invitation to ministry that happens online? That's what hybrid ministry is all about. So as we continue to explore hybrid ministry, We'll explore it through the angles of, of, of discipleship and outreach, knowing that those two things, those two, two emphases and focuses are far more important than any apps or technology. And ultimately therein is the good news when it comes to hybrid ministry, because you can do those things 
You can be invitational and you can equip individuals for service. Whether you have a large media budget and several church technology professionals on your staff, or whether you're a small parish with a, a pastor who maybe is even serving multiple congregations simultaneously. High tech or low tech, large budget or low budget, there is an opportunity to do hybrid ministry and to do it well.